Hello, Alex, for one. This is uh, from the packet that I would have given you. If you don't have the packet, I will put this also on Schoology to go along so you can print it off. So this is worksheet 10, 210A. So the keywords, the blank of a line is detected by M, refers to the steepness of the line. And that would be the slope of the line. Let's see if I can... So as you look at that worksheet 2-10A that I gave you, or if you needed to, you pull it offline. So the very first thing, there's a blank. It says the blank of a line is denoted by M, refers to the steepness of the line. Well, that's the slope of a line. Okay? So we use, and then they give us some values. They say M equals 10, M equals 4, M equals 1 fourth, and M equals 0. Well, if I graphed something that was 10 tall, it's a really steep line. At 4, it's not quite as steep. And then if I have a fraction, so in this case, 1 fourth, it's you know, getting less mellow. And then if you have a slope of 0, that's just a horizontal line. Okay. Now, down below, it says generally there are four ways that linear equations may appear graphically as shown. So you have a positive slope a negative slope, a zero slope, and an undefined slope. Well, positive slope means if I were to go to the right on my graph, if I was going to the right, the graph is going up. That's positive. If it's a negative slope, a negative slope is going to look something like this. So if I had on my graph, as I go to the right, it's dropping. And then if I have a slope of zero, Slope of zero is honestly just a horizontal line, okay? It could be anywhere up and down. And an undefined slope would be a vertical line, okay? And we'll talk about those a little bit later. There are many ways to find the slope of a line here, a few. So, so you might remember that slope is equal to m. They then have like a triangle in front of x and y. That means the change... The triangle means change in. So it's the change in the vertical. So if it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. Over the change in the horizontal. And usually with us, we're always going to have positive, so it means it's going to go to the right. Okay? They also refer to this as the rise over the run. Okay, that's just another way of talking about what rise is vertical, run is horizontal. So they're saying that we have a slope that was given to us of 3 over 2. So if you had a point on a line that you knew, let's say we knew, let's say we knew this point 2, 1, because 1, and if I went rise of 3, I'm going to go up 3 from that point and up 3 and right 2, and that would give us a different point, and that's going to establish us the line there. Now, if you were given two points, and they gave us the example of 3 and 4 and 5 and 7, one thing I have found that's easier to do is go ahead and label in whatever order you want um, x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay? The slope equation is then this, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, my y2 I have labeled as 7 minus y1, which is 4, over x2, which is 5, minus uh, x1, which is 3, and that's going to give me 3 over 2 for a slope. Now, some of you might ask, what if I label this x2 and y2 and this x1 and y1? We'll watch what's going to happen here. We're going to take, we're going to say that now our y1 is 4 minus our y1, which is 7, our x2, which is 3, minus our x1. So 4 minus 7 is negative 3. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative over negative is positive. So notice the slope is the exact same. Okay? As long as you get the x and y in the right order, x comes first, then y you can go ahead and do this. If you looked at a table, like they have listed, x1, 
And so we have 3, 4, 5, 6, and we have 13, 16, 19, and then 22. So you might remember, look, I'm adding 3 each time. And I'm not really worried about making the equation to it, but these are going all up by 1. So we've already found the slope before, so we could say the change in the y direction over the change in the x direction, so 3 over 1 is our slope. 3 over 1 is the same thing as 3. You can leave it as a fraction, 3 over 1, or you can change it just to a whole number being 3. But if we had picked any two of these points, I could pick this point, I could even pick this point, and I came through and I labeled this x1, y1, and this x2, y2, so I just picked two points arbitrarily. Watch what's going to happen. So my slope equation is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so I'm going to get 13 minus 22. 13 minus 22. And then uh, uh, 3. Oh, I went backwards, didn't I? Let's change that. Sorry about that. So my x2, or my y2, I said was 22. y1 is 13. And then 6 minus 3. So do the subtraction here. That's going to give me 9 over 3. We'll reduce this. So that gives me 3 over 1, which we said is the same thing as 3. So it works out. So if you pick any two points on a line, and they're two different points in a straight line, the slope will be the same no matter what two you pick. Okay? So let's work a couple of these problems, make sure we feel comfortable with it. So I think problem number one and number two on the next page, three and four, I think you can do everything with that. Um, but let's look, take a look at number three because something different happened there. So I got four comma five and four comma seven. It looks normal to us, but you might notice you have a four that repeats in the X spot. So I'm gonna say my slope is Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to get 7 minus 5, 4 minus 4. Notice this, 7 minus 5 is 2, 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay, if 0 is under our line, it is an undefined slope, which would mean it's a vertical line. Okay, if you recall from the previous example. If you looked at problem number four, I'm going to kind of just squeeze number four right here. I get uh, two six and negative three six. And again, if I label it x1, y1, x2, y2, my slope equation is going to be y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So this is going to give me zero on top. So when zero is on top, my slope of my line is zero. Now things that you might see about this, is remember a fraction is the same thing as division. So if I want 2 divided by 0 on a calculator, it's going to give you an error. If you go 0 divided by negative 5, it will give you 0. So just be noted that. Looks like 5 and 6 you can do. And then it comes down and says writing in slope intercept form. Slope intercept form. This is at the bottom of the back page of the first page. Okay, slope intercept form of a line is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so a few things to note. This b value is where it crosses the y intercept. The y intercept is always 0, comma, some number. Okay, so we're going to deal with that. So note where the 0 falls. It's in the x spot. Okay, so if you look at our line that's given, we have 0, comma, 30. So 0, comma, 30. This 30 is our y-intercept, which will be our letter B. Okay? So now, so far I know this. Okay? I would then need to figure out what my slope is. Okay? So let's figure out our slope. So we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And remember I said we could pick any two points we want. We could pick 0, 30, and 1, and 25. We could pick 0, 30, and 2, and 20, or we could pick 1, and 25, and 2, and 20. It doesn't matter which two you pick. So let's pick 0, 30, and let's pick 1, and 25, and label those x1, y1, x2, y2. 
let's find the slope, which is 25 minus 30, 1 minus 0. So that's going to give me a slope of negative 5 over 1, which is negative 5. That's my slope. So now I found the slope. Well, I just need to take that and plug it in here. So my equation is going to be y equals negative 5x plus 30. I could have it as over 1 if I wanted to, but I don't have to. So why don't you try those next two on your own and see how you do. And you might notice on the next two, we don't have a 0, 30, do we? So let's look at the first one. I have 2, negative 10, and 3, negative 5, and I also have 4, and comma zero. I'm just making missed points. All right. I don't have a zero in the x spot, so I don't have the y-intercept right away. Do you agree? So the first thing we should do is maybe let's say let's say let's find the slope. So I'm going to go y two minus y one over x two minus x one. Okay. So I'm going to pick two of my points. I'm going to pick this one, and maybe I'll pick this one. So I'll label this x one y one this x2 and y2. Let's plug them in. I could, it doesn't matter which points I'd picked as long as there are two different points. So I'm going to get 0 minus negative 10, 4 minus 2, 0 minus minus 10 is positive 10, 4 minus 2 is 2. Reduce that so I get 5 over 1 which is 5. So there's my slope. Okay, so so far if we use y equals mx plus b, I know my slope. I don't know what B is. So there has to be another way to do this. Well, there is an equation called point slope. And point slope's general equation looks like this. Now notice, we already called this x1 and y1. Agree? So let's plug the x1 and the y1 in. I found the slope up above, so let's plug in what we know. So I get y minus minus 10 equals 5x minus 2. Okay, so I want to take this equation and make it look like this. So let's do a little math. Minus minus 10 is plus 10. Let's distribute over the parentheses. And then let's subtract this 10 from both sides. So those cancel. So I get y equals 5x minus 20. And there's our slope intercept. Okay, when I use point slope, it doesn't matter which of the x ones or x and y's we use over the points up above, just stay consistent. I bet you you could handle figuring out the third problem. Okay, so what I want you to do is I would like you to take the rest of the period and complete by tomorrow. Um, on the second page, I want to make sure you have one through six done. And then on the back side, um, why don't you do seven through 12 as well? Have that done as well. You have the rest of the period uh, and you can talk to me, but I'm happy to do this. We'll go over this uh, on Friday but I'm happy to come around the room and help you while you're working on this. But keep this packet with you. Bring it back tomorrow, please. Have a nice day.